us to talk more about that is pollster and political analyst Bill Shepard. Uh, Bill, in a nutshell, uh, welcome, by the way, and thanks Thank for you. getting up early this morning. You bet. In a nutshell, how does this Supreme Court ruling affect it? Well, what it's going to do is basically allow unions and corporations to provide more money, uh, more or less what they call soft money, directly to um, everything from PACs to also uh, even the parties themselves, and to engage in what more is electioneering, which is calling for the election or defeat of a particular candidate. And by doing so, it's going to bring uh, more wealthy money into the situation and then corporations, which for the long time in public opinion, Oklahomans have felt like that we needed to put limits on that. That's what that was going to be my next question. How do Oklahomans feel about this? I mean, corporate giving and and uh, there are some Oklahomans who say, hey, this is a right of free speech. Right. We should be able to send money where we want to spend money. Absolutely. You know, in, in uh, one uh, poll that SoonerPoll.com, which is on our website, uh, we performed here in the last three or four months or so, we asked about this particular issue. And what we found was is when we asked, is uh, money a form of speech, uh, overwhelmingly Oklahomans agree. They really value our Constitution. They value our of First Amendment right of free speech, and they really are cautious about wanting to put limitations on it. However, they feel like that money put brought into the election process and into campaigns they think can have a, 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 a negative effect, and they do at the same time feel like that limits do need to put on that money. So, so a little bit kind of a paradox here. A little bit of a contradiction. Yeah, it's, it's, it's as if the voters don't really know how to solve this problem. I think they're going to look to our leaders, our Supreme Court, in which to come up with these kinds of decisions. Well, we've been looking to them for, what, 30 years to come up with, a, with, with something to fix this, and it hasn't happened. That's correct. And McCain-Feingold was one attempt in which to put some um, uh, uh, limits on corporations or union involvement money-wise into campaigns. Part of the problem, though, was is that went a little bit too far in the minds of even some Oklahomans in the fact that it said that you could not spend money or mention a candidate uh, with soft money within 60 days of an election. We're almost out of time, and I'm going to ask yeah. you about the NEA's donation to the Yes on 744 campaign because right. this kind of plays right into that. Uh, we see an impact in other areas as well? Well, you know, in that particular case, at this point, 744 in the polling that we have done has, has, is beginning to not perform very well. In fact, we have almost two to one uh, opposition to 744, and yet the support side is going to heavily outspend the no side in that particular election. So in that one uh, is a good example of where money may not dictate how the outcome of the of the of the state question comes out. So, uh, can money have an impact on campaigns? Absolutely. Candidates typically that raise the most money end up winning. But this may be an odd year for that because we have a lot of even Republicans down ticket who are very well underfunded, and yet at the same time they're doing much better in the polls than their opponent. Well, and voters are, are because of the economy and other things that are playing into these elections. Uh, they are doing their homework more this year, and they are not going to be. Uh, buffaloed by a lot of money being thrown at various questions and candidates. They are doing their studying and it seems to be working. That's right. And I think that's one of the reasons why the Supreme Court took the view that they took, which is that let's let the, p the public see through, hopefully, some of this, because right now we have corporations that own the media and they don't certainly have any limits on free speech. So I think that what they were wanting to do is say, look, let's loosen it up and let's put a little more faith into the voters and let's hope that they can see through it and not just let money always dictate election outcomes. All right. Bill, thank you so much for being here. Appreciate your insight. You bet. All right. Robin?